Good everyone, my name's Alex from the Programming Juvenile. And I'm Yian from my own channel, Madbook. And today we're going to be looking at the best design features of Among Us. As I'm sure most of you will know, Among Us is the hugely popular online social deduction game by Anna Sloth. It was released way back in mid-2018, but recently it has had a major popularity boost from its streamability on platforms like Twitch. I'm sure especially if you're watching this video that you've either played this game or at least seen this game be played. So whether you're a game developer or gaming enthusiast, I'm going to be giving you, with the help of Madbook, the 5 reasons why Among Us is an absolute masterclass in game design. Reason number 1 has got to be the social aspect of this game. The social aspect of Among Us is easily its greatest strength, and has allowed it to become incredibly popular all of a sudden, with people stuck indoors more often than not because of the <coughs> situation. If you've been living under a rock the past two months and still don't know how this game works yet, you and the rest of your crew must work together to find and remove the imposter from your spacecraft or wherever else you decide to play. This instantly creates an interesting environment for gameplay as accusations and alibis start flying left, right and centre. I think for the most part, we can all agree this game is at its best when playing in a voice call with a group of friends. If you can gather a group of 8-10 to 10 friends, you're basically guaranteed to have a good time. You can come together and shove your closest friends out of an airlock for no good reason, even if you are hundreds of miles away from each other. And now I'm going to hand it over to Madbook. <laughs> Thanks Alex. The thing I've chosen for the second reason has got to be the art style since it's absolutely brilliant. Sure, the character customization screen looks fuzzy and the gameplay UI takes up like half of the screen, but it's just all part of the charm and it's so beautifully consistent. It has the aesthetic of a mid-2000s flash game, everything just fits together with no single object or animation feeling out of place. And speaking of animation, wow, are the animations for the imposter kills just incredible. They literally cut through the tension in a round and completely add to the constant threat of the imposter. It just has such contrast, even with the colours when compared to the relative nervous calm that exists during the rest of the game. To top this all off, the art is totally accessible to new players. Take a game like League of Legends or Dota, and during a teamfight, if you're unfamiliar with the game, you'll have no idea what is going on. But Among Us primarily makes use of simple cartoony shapes and geometry, thick lines and really clear indicators. It goes a really long way to help players understand the game better and faster. Reason number three is the usage of the game's tasks or minigames. Everyone in the crew except the imposter has a list of tasks that they must complete to win the round, meaning that even if the imposter cannot be found, the crewmates still have an objective that gives them a decent chance at winning. However, there are some key design concepts that might be hidden to a casual observer. These tasks have two purposes. The first is to of course give the crew members a way to win without catching the imposter, which is obvious. But the second is to constantly keep everyone moving through the map instead of standing around. This idea is then furthered because tasks themselves are so simple and intuitive. Basically everyone can do them. This means that even if you're new to the game, you can complete these tasks and help out your fellow crewmates, even if you are unable to spot the imposter or effectively communicate your gameplay with the group. As a result, the first few times a new player plays the game, they don't feel completely left out as they discover the many mechanics and strategies of this game. It's me again, and reason 4 is ghosts. After a crewmate dies, they become a ghost and are still able to complete their remaining tasks while having total, undarkened vision of their screen. This feature is so smart and is integral to player retention. In other words, it stops people from getting bored. It would have been an easy decision to leave deceased crewmates as passive bystanders, just waiting until the next game starts with absolutely nothing to do. But by allowing them to continue their tasks, as well as fly about the map watching the chaos unfold, the devs have found a great way of keeping their players engaged in the game long after they have lost their ability to more directly impact the game. The same thing applies to the imposter too. If you're playing with two imposters and one of them is lost early on, the idea to give the ghost imposter the ability to sabotage the map from beyond the grave to keep on helping is a masterstroke in keeping players involved. I think that it is design choices like this that go unnoticed by your average player, but they make a huge difference in the game's ability to keep players engaged for long stretches of time, adding to the game's fun and as a result, boosting its popularity. Reason number 5 is the genius system that allows players to customise nearly every single part of their games. When playing a game of Among Us, you can make all of the rules. You can choose how many players there are, how many imposters there are, player speed, player viewing distance, and so on and so forth. And because of all the ways you can customise the game, 
it's suddenly so much more replayable. You can make every single game unique and different from the last, and balance or adapt it to the people you're playing with. This major feature in Among Us has also led to the creation of many unique game modes, which have sprang forth from the community, such as Hide and Seek, Small Talk Mode, Colorblind Mode, and so much more. You can find a list of a few of these game modes in the description. The game settings, customization, and Among Us has allowed a community to thrive through their own creativity, an awesome technique that more indie game devs should be following if they want to improve their game design. So that's the five reasons why Among Us is a masterclass in game design. With the help of the game's online social aspects, simple but beautiful art style, tasks that are accessible to every player, the ability to continue playing after death, and the game's great customization features, this game was able to take the world by storm, and as indie devs we should definitely take notice of it. There's a lot we can learn from Among Us and its success, and these things are important to learn if we want to take our indie games to the next level. With that, thank you all for watching today's video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to smash like and subscribe for more content in the future like this. Also, a big thank you to Madbooks for helping with today's video. But, that's not where our collaboration ends. We have another Game Dev Among Us video over on Madbooks' channel, so be sure to check that out and subscribe to him too. He's got some great content over there. I'll have a link in the description to help you get to his channel and the video. Also, if you want to see more from me, be sure to check out my devlog series, or recent Day in the Life video in which I'm working on my game Lone Wolf World War 2. What's that? You, you don't know what Lone Wolf is. Lone Wolf is a World War 2 piloting game where you get to fly around shooting down enemy planes, bombing buildings and tanks, and lasting as long as you possibly can out on the battlefield. You can go to nearly every country in Europe and a few countries in the Middle East and Africa. You can even have your own influence in the events of World War 2. If you're interested, I'll leave a link below to the Steam page where you can wishlist it now. Every wishlist is greatly appreciated. And with that, thank you again for watching, and I'll see you over on Madbook's channel. See ya.